Hey guys, so today we are going to be doing another reading vlog, and in this reading vlog, we are going to be reading Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I just have the dust jacket right now because I've already set it aside by my bed so that I'm prepared to read that later today. We are reading Powerless because I have been seeing this book quite literally everywhere. Like, I'm not kidding. I've seen it all over Book Talk, all over BookTube, and a lot of people have been hyping up this book. I don't know about you guys, but there's only so much I can resist my curiosity and I'm actually very intrigued by this book because a lot of people have been hyping it up and they've been saying a lot of great things. Granted a lot of people did the same thing with Fourth Wing and I fell into that trap and unfortunately it did not live up to the hype in my opinion but I do have a little bit more faith in this book because a lot of people that have similar reading tastes to me have also said that they liked it. Not to say that I wasn't wrong before about this because I definitely was about Fourth Wing and people that had similar reading tastes to me and it it not aligning with that but I don't know something about it this time around I really trust it a lot more so I'm super excited I don't really know much about the premise of this book so we can read the summary together so it says only the extraordinary belong in the kingdom of Ilya I think that's what it's called the exceptional the elites the elites have possessed powers for decades, gifted to them by the plague, while those born ordinary are just that, banished from the kingdom of Ilya and shunned from society. No one knows this better than Payton Gray, an ordinary posing as a psychic to blend in with the elites. But when she unwittingly saves one of Ilya's princes, Kai Azar, she's thrown into the purging trials, a brutal competition showcasing the elite's powers. If the trials and the opponents within them don't kill her, the prince she's fighting feelings for will if he discovers what Payton it is completely ordinary which i don't know about you guys but that sounds pretty sick i can't say for sure it sounds like the hunger games because it's not like they're trying to kill each other or anything it might be closer to i always get this book title wrong but the crown of nyaxia series the first one the serpent and the wings of night it kind of sounds similar to that but also not really at the same time either but i always love a book with a good competition i love goblet of fire that was literally one of my favorite books in the harry Potter series. I love the Hunger Games. I liked the first book of Crown of Night Axia for the most part other than a couple of things and I'm sure there's other books out there that have competition in them that I also enjoy. This is very much up my alley. I'm super excited to get into it. I have nothing but good vibes, good intentions. What am I saying? I have nothing but great hopes for this book. I don't want to give myself too big of an expectation just because the higher the expectations you have for a book or anything in life, the easier it is for you to be disappointed pointed and let down so I'm not gonna do that to myself I'm not gonna hype this up even more in my head but I am gonna go into it with good vibes and hope for nothing but the best and yeah I'm super excited this author is on TikTok I've seen her videos and it's really intriguing to see her writing process too so it just makes you want to root for her and I do want to root for her I, I do want to like this book so yeah I'm hoping for nothing but the best these next few days are gonna be it's not gonna be too bad just because the holiday days are coming up so it's not too crazy but I do have a few things that I have to get done for the next few days so I can bring you guys along with me but for now I think I'm gonna read this probably tonight before I go to bed and then also tomorrow I, I do have to get a lot of editing done which kind of sucks it sucks in a way where it's like I have a lot to do but not in a way that I hate doing it you know like I do enjoy editing and I am really excited for you guys to see the videos that are coming up I have filmed a lot so there is that i also have to prep some other stuff oh i have a class that i have to go to like an acting class and other than that i think it'll be okay i think i'll be able to get this book done maybe in a couple days how many pages is this 523 pages well i just finished the percy jackson series and i read maybe like one book a day throughout the day and that was like 300 something pages so if that's the case with percy jackson i think i'll be able to get it done within two days spread out throughout the day if i really try hard to you know read the book if not i think i'll be able to get it done within the week which is an ideal so I will be aiming for two to three days so we are going to be focusing on that this weekend but yeah I will update you guys when I have more thoughts on it when I read the book a little bit at least so I will see you guys then <laughs>
literally still hate my haircut. It looks so bad. I mean, it's gotten a lot better, but it's these little pieces that are really killing me right now, and I hate it so much. Anyways, I just got done the gym, and by the gym, I just mean I went to the gym to literally just walk for a mile and then use the sauna because this is not a flattering angle. But I literally used it to just walk on the treadmill for a mile, and then I used the sauna for a little bit because I'm still a little under the weather. I don't know why I said it like that, but I'm, I'm still a little under the weather and I don't know why. I really don't know what it is. It doesn't feel like a cold or anything. So I don't really know what I have or if I have anything. I don't know. But I went to Marshall's, done at the gym, and now I'm about to go to Trader Joe's, I think, or maybe Target, depending on how I feel. There's a lot of people out right now because of the holidays, but I'm gonna go to Trader Joe's. I'm gonna pick up some food and then I'm gonna go back and edit a little bit and then read a little bit more. I do want to update you guys on the book a little bit. So I read like 5% more of the book at the gym while I was walking and I understand now why everybody loves Kai. Kai? I don't know what else happens beyond this point. Maybe he does stuff that is questionable. Maybe we don't like him anymore after the fact. But so far, Kai, Kai is it. Kai is the one. I really, really hope that Peyton, Kai, and Kit have a little romance, a little love triangle, a little love cone, if you want to be technical. I really hope that they do because I see the tension brewing and I already love it so much. I love it. I love Peyton and Kai so much. They are so cute. Ah. I'm super excited to read the rest. Honestly, if I'm being quite honest here, I might just binge the rest of this book when I get back. Who cares if I need to edit? I can edit after I finish this book. I don't know. I don't know. And we're going to figure it out because I kind of am very hooked on this book. I'm so happy that I got into this after the Percy Jackson series because I was worried that I would go into a little bit of a slump after the Percy Jackson series because it was so good. And to follow anything up to a series especially a five book series that's a lot of pressure and i'm glad this is living up to the pressure so i am super excited i will keep you guys updated after i get back and read a little bit more so i'll see you guys then <laughs> I've read this much and I am on chapter 18 and according to my Kindle, I am, I'm 28% of the way through this book right now. There's a glare, but just trust me when my Kindle says that I am 28% of the way through this book. I feel like it's breezing by so fast and a lot is happening. It's kind of like the Hunger Games where they come to the main city, castle, whatever. They train, then they have interviews. They show their powers or whatever, and then they're gonna get thrown into these trials. They're saying it's gonna be a little bit different this time around, so I guess we'll find out how it's different through their perspectives and whatever, but there's a lot, a lot of flirting going on between Kai and, what's her face? Between Kai and Peyton, and I am here for it. They're definitely not enemies to lovers. This is not an enemies to lovers type of story. I don't know if it's marketed as an enemies to lover. I don't know if people think this is enemies to lovers, but in my personal opinion, this is not enemies to lovers at all. Nowhere near the realm of enemies to lovers. They already are so interested in each other, and it's kind of like a will they won't they type of vibe, and I think that's why I like it so much, because it really is like, will they won't they get together? Will they won't they like each other after these secrets come out? Because I know I know Kai is gonna find out about Peyton's secret that she is an ordinary. And I know that Kai has secrets on his own. I know he has secrets. I'm gonna bet that he's not actually related to Kit and it's gonna be like this whole thing. I just have a feeling because the way that she emphasizes that Kit looks so much like his father and mother and then Kai doesn't, I just feel like they're gonna reveal that they're not related. 
<laughs> I don't know, but I guess we'll find out. I don't know if that's a spoiler. I don't think it's a spoiler just because we know that they're siblings, like from the summary, I think. I don't know, but I don't think it's a spoiler. If it's a spoiler, let me know and I apologize. <laughs> It's kind of early for me. It's like 9.42 right now, almost 10 o'clock. And I'm feeling so fatigued. I really don't know what it is. I don't know if it's allergies. I don't know if it's a cold. It's a lot of things. It's definitely not the flu. So I don't really know what's happening, but I feel very exhausted right now. So my original plans to edit are gonna have to be postponed till tomorrow. I mean, I did edit today. Don't get me wrong. I did edit, but I just didn't get through as much of it as I thought I would. Yeah, I've only gotten through eight minutes of it I have a feeling it's gonna end up being like anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes of actual footage like the final video amount so I'm gonna work on that tomorrow also too in the past few months I have been routinely getting gel refills so I have hard gel on my nails right like these are hard gel however the salon that I've been going to for the past month I don't know what it is about their gel nail polishes or maybe it's the hard gel I don't know but it keeps peeling off so it's peeled off on my thumb it looks so gross and it peeled off on my middle finger on this hand so tomorrow I think I have to do like an emergency nail appointment at another salon just because this might be gross to some of you guys but before I went to Korea and I got the gel nails and the extensions and stuff I was a very chronic nail biter and I hated that but I just never knew how to not do that anymore because I've tried like tried so many different things like I've tried acrylics in the past I've tried dip nail just regular gel and just anything and everything under the sun before I went to Korea I've tried and it did not stop me from biting my nails I don't know why I just have an issue with biting my nails I think it's also because I'm generally a pretty anxious person so one of my anxious tics used to be like hardcore it used to be nail biting and skin picking around my fingers I'm trying to prevent this one from getting bad before it would be bad like it would be like down to here and it would it just looks so bad and ugly since I've gotten these done like on a routine basis I've been able to prevent that and I've been able to grow it out long like these are my actual nails which is a lot I'm not used to this so in order to prevent myself from potentially biting my nails, I need to get them done tomorrow, which sounds like a first world problem, which it is. It is a first world problem, but I'm really, I'm really trying not to bite my nails. So yeah, I'm gonna try and see if anybody can squeeze me in, honestly. Anybody but the place I've been going to, cause I don't know, the fact that this has happened two, three times already, like this is the third set of nails that it's peeled on, I think it's a sign. So I'm gonna try to do that tomorrow. But also today, I'm gonna try to read before I go to sleep. Like I'm gonna try to read at least 20%. I don't know if I will be able to just because my head is hurting and I'm tired, but I will read before I go to sleep. But tomorrow I am hoping to finish the rest of the book. I do have a class that I have to drop into tomorrow and I have to edit as well. But I'm trying to like not bombard myself. Like that's one thing that I'm like really bad at is that I always overpack my days with things to do. And I don't think that's really good for me. I think that's actually really bad for my mental health. And so I need to stop. So I'm gonna just keep listening to my body. I've been moving around the stuff cause I'm a really big Google Calendar planner, like a digital planner. So I've been moving around my time block throughout the week and throughout the day just to see how it's going and just kind of listening to my body since I have been sick for a couple weeks now. So I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I mean, I can't really move the class tomorrow and I also have to see when they can fit me in for a nail appointment. But other than that, my first priority is definitely finishing this book and then second priority is gonna be finishing my edits. So yeah, should be good. I will update you guys tomorrow and I will see you guys then. Good morning, hello. <laughs> I'm so tired. I mean, I do know why because I ended up staying up later than I should have Like I ended up going to sleep maybe around 1 1 30 which isn't that bad Especially for a weekend like it's really not that bad, but at the same time like I'm sick So I should not be doing that. So anyway 
it is what it is. I just wanted to give you guys an update on what's been going on in the book. So it's around the 34% mark and I could not finish this chapter because I kept falling asleep at the same page. If you've ever done that, you know exactly the feeling. Like I feel like I kept thinking I finished the page and then I would like open my eye <laughs> What do you mean I didn't finish this page? And then I would proceed to do it again and it would be this endless cycle. I had to cut myself off at a certain point and be like that. <laughs> Just go to sleep. <laughs> So yeah, that happened. I'm about to be on chapter 21. We found out who Peyton is going to the ball with. Well, the, we are currently at the ball, honestly. We are currently at the ball. We find out who Peyton is going with in terms of who she's dancing with. A character has come back to the kingdom with her. So that's super fun. An old friend has re-entered the chat. Tensions are high and I simply cannot. I feel like the more I read this book, the more I'm realizing that like the writing style is fine for what it is like it's not lyrical you know what I mean like it's not like lyrical lyrical like Stephanie Garber is simple but very lyrical this is simple but not lyrical but not in a bad way you know there are moments of lyrical but overall it's not but that's okay and i'm okay with that i don't know if this is how people felt when they were reading fourth wing and they're like no but the writing style is so good i love the writing style like i don't know if that's how people feel for this but i don't really get the same vibe as fourth wing with this book you know what i mean i don't know i don't <laughs> i really don't know how to explain this but it's like very, like if I had to compare it to like a fantasy writing style, it's closer to Stephanie Garber, which is not a knock at all because I love Stephanie Garber. And it's probably why I like this book <laughs> because it's more similar to the writing style of Stephanie Garber in terms of readability as well as simplicity and also, yeah, those are all the reasons <laughs> I could think of. But for Powerless, it's not really fairy tale esque So that's where it's very different from one another. Like Stephanie Garber is very like, it reads like a fairy tale. And for Powerless, it does not read like a fairy tale, you know? So that's very different. The fact that I am sitting here itching to read the rest of this book, kicking my feet every time I hear and read about Kai, you already know. You already know. Like, I, I love this book. And so, I, I don't know. I like it. I don't read high fantasy, though. So if you read high fantasy and you really love high fantasy and that's the fantasy for you, I don't know if you'll like this book, to be quite honest with you. I don't know. But if you like fantasy in general, whether it's high fantasy or what is the other end of the spectrum, low fantasy, I don't know. But if you like fantasy in general, especially if you like romance fantasy or romance books and you're trying to get into fantasy, I would definitely say this is a good book to get into along with Things like Once Upon a Broken Heart series, Caravel. I'm sure there's other fantasy series. I'm just not thinking of them. My brain is working on two brain cells. So that's what's happening here. Anyways, before I go into a whole tangent about that, overall, I am really enjoying this book so far. I did read it on my Kindle last night. So I do have to transfer those highlights into my book before I start reading. So I am on top of it because if I keep postponing this, it's going to be a mess because I already have to do the Percy Jackson series and a little life as far as annotation transfer goes. So I don't want to keep doing that. So I'm gonna start a new habit with this one and just transfer it as I go. So we're going to transfer those over, read a little bit more. I did manage to secure a nail appointment at noon. So I'm super pumped because I was a little worried I would have to wait till like after my class to do it. And that's like getting close to five o'clock and I do not want to be out by five o'clock. You know, I'm going to transfer annotations, read before my nail appointment, and then run some errands, go to class, and then go back to reading and editing. I do have to edit my Percy Jackson reaction video. Like, I, I enjoy editing. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. Maybe this is just a me thing. But I feel like when I have a to-do list and I see it and I know it and I barely scratch the surface and I only got one thing done, I feel so much pressure and I'm like oh my god I have to get everything done though and that's how I feel about my editing cue I have a few videos that I have completed filming but I haven't gotten around to editing them just because I it is what it is you know it, it's just one of those things where I finished filming a lot of them at the same time so before I finished filming them I maybe got through all the editing cue but now that all of them have wrapped up there's like four sitting there and I'm like oh my god Okay, so that's what it is. Not complaining though. I genuinely do like editing, so I don't mind at all. It's just 
a lot of self-induced anxiety that I give myself, so it is what it is. <laughs> Anyways, we're just gonna get right into it before I talk for like another 15, 30 minutes about <laughs> I can't tell if this hair is giving founding father. The British are here. Thomas Jefferson. I can't really tell. I did put like a little bow in it though. I don't know if you can see. Oh my God, my stomach is growling so much. I really like coquette style. Like I love it, but I am slowly trying to weave it into my own style because up front, I'm not very coquette. <laughs> my style is not super girly. It's not. <laughs> so that's why I'm slowly integrating it into my life with the bows and all that stuff. So we'll see how that goes. Anyways, I wanted to come on here and give you guys an update on my nails because I just got them done. After looking at them, by the way, they did a great job. So it's, it's no fault but my own. They look great, but after looking at them, I was like, oh my God, why did I get this color? Because this is summer, this is spring. <laughs> And we are in winter right now. Kind of wish I got like blue glitter instead or like silver glitter, but it's okay. We live and we learn. So these are the nails that I got. I don't know if you can tell. My hands look so ugly <laughs> when they do that. But these are my nails. They have this like glitter. It's a glitter tip. So it's like pink glitter with like a pink base and whatever. I hope you can. It's very simple, especially versus my last set of nails, which were like this green turned dark green with glitter because it was like a bright green and then they put black glitter on top of it, which made it darker, which is fine, but I just did not like the nails. To be honest, I did not like the color and that was also my fault for not speaking up about it. <laughs> I like it better than those nails and it doesn't like stand out as much when I put my hands up. It like kind of looks pretty natural and that's okay with me. I went to a new salon so I was a little bit worried to do an actual design because I don't really know how well they do designs. So I just want to test them out, see how they do with these and then if I like them, I'll go back and I would definitely go back to them. I think they did a great job and the vibes were there. The vibes were good. Yeah. Next time I'm definitely going to ask for like more of a design. So I do need to eat because as you heard my stomach grumbling earlier, I am very hungry. I don't know what to eat though. I'm going to make food and read a little bit more before my class and then... And hopefully I'll finish this tonight. I'm pretty close to halfway, so I think I'll be able to finish it tonight, but I do need to edit. So I might have to like do a, a gamified version of this where like every hundred pages, I have to do like an hour of editing or something like that until I'm done. I don't know, we'll figure it out, <laughs> we'll figure it out. I will see you guys later. Degrees and sunny, just the way I always wanted. Tall but I got the upside. Jiggle I am on chapter thirty-two. I just got done chapter thirty-one. If you know, you know. You know exactly what happened at the end of chapter 31. A devastating thing that happened at the end of chapter 31. I thought we were here for a good time. I thought we were vibing. I, th I thought it was a silly goofy time. It's clearly not. Oh my god. Wow. A lot yet not a lot has happened in the past few chapters. We got a lot of building up of Kai and Peyton's character development with each other, their relationship, all that good stuff. We got to see a little bit more about things that are happening within the trials too. This is not a knock to the author, but personally for me, the trials kind of feel like when Katniss and Peeta were in the cave together. That's the vibe that I've been getting in the past few chapters. Now, as things are picking up in the trials, it's reminding me of in the first 
book when they're enticed to go back to the cornucopia to get what they each need Katniss went back for the medicine for Peta. I don't know what what was in the other packs they might have said it. I don't remember but you know you know that part of the Hunger Games that's the vibe it's giving me right now I don't know like it does kind of feel like Hunger Games but not like it was inspired by Hunger Games like parts of it definitely do feel like very heavily inspired by the Hunger Games, which I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining here because I love the Hunger Games, but I thought there would be more to the trials, you know? I thought it would be like competition based on like, like I thought it'd be more like the Olympics, you know? Like maybe a little bit more violent of Olympics, but the Olympics, but it's not that. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that, but it's okay. It is what it is. I really like Kai and Peyton's chemistry. I am starting to get a little bit annoyed though with the amount of time <laughs> With the amount of times that they pull a dagger to their throats, like, I get it. You're trying to make it seem like you guys hate each other, which clearly you guys don't hate each other. You guys have known from the start that you don't actually hate each other. There is that. It is what it is. I'm having a great time. I'm having a silly, goofy time. Can't complain. I think this is exactly what I needed to transition from Percy Jackson to literally anything else. It's... It's like the type of book that you don't really have to think much about, but you'll still have a great time. I need to take a break though, because I'm very upset at what happened at the end of chapter 31. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. Maybe I'll edit for a little bit. Maybe I'll make another cup of coffee. Who really knows? I don't really know, but I will update you guys later because I think I'm gonna end up finishing this book today or early tomorrow. I'm literally more than halfway done this book at this point. So it's getting there. It's getting there. I don't know if you can see it, but my hair is currently not hairing right now. I washed my hair today, I got ready, and I forgot to blow dry my hair as soon as it got like 90% dry, at least in the top part. So it parted weird. And then I thought that if I blow dried it, it would be fine. But now it's like weird. I don't know. This is the thing about the haircut that I got. I got it maybe like a month ago at this point, but they cut it really short and a little bit uneven because I originally asked for curtain bangs that could be short enough to do front bangs and then long enough to push back. And this person, I've gone to them before and they have done a really good job with it. And I really liked it, but this time around, I just was not a fan. So now it's growing out and it's growing out really weird and I don't like it, but it is what it is, I guess. Anyways, I just wanted to update you guys on Powerless and how far I've gotten into it. I believe I'm at like the 65%-ish mark at this point, they just got done the first round of the trials. The thing that I was talking about in the last clip, it was a just kidding moment. <laughs> it was like a ha ha he he, just kidding. You thought that there was gonna be a very emotional moment, but ha ha he he, it was just a plot twist, which is good because I was very sad. But it was also like, okay, Lauren, we see you. I mean, this, this might be a spoiler. So if you don't wanna hear about it, skip ahead a little bit more and I probably won't be talking about it, but I'm at the point where Peyton has joined the rebellion, which I personally don't think that's like a spoiler spoiler just because she's the protagonist of this story and we are clearly introduced to like the power dynamics of what's happening with the ordinaries and the elites and the kingdom and all that stuff. And we very much emphasize the kingdom side of things. And it's, you know, the midway point. And now she's getting recruited into the rebellion. And I'm not really surprised by that. So I think that's why I'm not, I'm like, mm, it's not really a spoiler because it's kind of the inevitable. If it's a spoiler, I'm so sorry. She joined the rebellion, surprise. If you didn't want to hear spoilers, you should have skipped ahead. Anyway, Anyways, that's where we are right now. And now she's trying to con Kit into helping her without him knowing and all of that stuff. It is what it is. I am starting to realize though, there are certain things about this book that I'm like, mm, I don't know, bestie. <laughs> like, for example, I don't think that this is a spoiler, but they mention a, a type of elite or a powered person called the sights. And they basically are like video cameras. <laughs> But like people, you know, like they're the ones taking video footage of what's happening in the first round of the trials with all the different contestants and all of that stuff. So they're like literally walking around capturing this with their little eyeballs. You can't touch them. I don't know what happens if you touch them, but you can't touch them. And afterwards, they are 
like for the final round of the first round, they get like herded into this like little area, like this little bubble where people can spectate, right? And then they get this screen to showcase it. But my thing is, is that I'm just confused about this book a little bit in terms of like, is this a dystopian world, a dystopian fantasy, or is this fantasy world high tech? Because she describes it as a screen. And when I think of a screen, I think of like electronic screen. So maybe it's just me and maybe I'm such a digital person in this digital age that that's all I associate it with. But when they said that, that they got this screen and they're projecting what the sites are seeing and what they saw during the game and the highlights and, and whatever, like in my brain, I'm like, oh, is, is this a dystopian then? Is this not like a medieval esque fantasy world because it kind of reads that way before they did all that but I don't really know anymore so that threw me off and it kind of made me come out of the story a little bit so I was like okay anyway let's just ignore that and pretend like that did not happen and then also too on top of that I don't know about you people do this a lot in romance stories and romance fantasy stories but people describe the eye colors of these characters a lot like a lot. And okay, fine. If you like the person, I guess you'll notice their eyes. You'll you'll see how their eyes twinkle and how their eyes look beautiful to that person. Okay, fine, fine. But I'm getting a little bit tired of the amount of times that <laughs> Ty describes Peyton's eyes as ocean eyes. I, I'm getting tired of it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry if you love that, but there are only so many times that I can read ocean eyes and take it seriously. There's only so many times I can read ocean eyes and not just go, I'm not gonna sing it, but, <laughs> but sing Ocean Eyes by Billie Eilish and just, get carried away with that instead of reading the story. I am i don't know, I can't do it. And then also see on the flip side, Peyton describes Kai's eyes as steel eyes all the time. I mean, it's not as prominent as ocean eyes, but still it happens. And I just think that if we're gonna use this, I, it's not a trope, but if we're gonna use this mechanism, if we're gonna include that into the story, then maybe we should use different adjectives, descriptors, rows in order to describe these eyes. You see what I'm saying here? You get Get me and also I'm realizing as I'm reading this book why does every fantasy character like the main character of every romanticy book why do they all kind of look the same no offense I only realized this after I was on Pinterest and I was looking up like what they look like because I like to look up fan art for like what these characters look like in general when it comes to fantasy books but I saw this one fan art and in the comments people are like who is this is this x y and z from a different series they're like no this is x y and z from this series and they're like no no no, no it's x y and z from this series and then finally the original person that posted it they're like no this is Peyton and Kai from Powerless. So I think that just goes to show that a lot of these fantasy characters look alike. And I just wanna know, why can't we just get some like brown hair, brown eyed girlies as the main character? I don't know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Oh, and then also too, I think I said this maybe in an earlier clip, but I'm also getting tired of the whole dagger to the throat thing. Like we get it, you know how to use a dagger. We get it, you have a dagger from your dad. We get it, you wanna be violent. But why? Why is it every single time? Why? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's so much wasted potential with stories like this because it's like, it's a good foundation, but there are just certain things I'm like, if we had just done this, I think it would have been a little bit better in terms of storytelling, in my opinion, but that's just me, you know? Other than that though, like it's not a bad book. By any means, this is not a bad book. And I am really enjoying this book. Other than those like few qualms I have about it, I really like this book. It's fast paced, super fun. It's pretty lighthearted, I would say for a fantasy book. It's easy to read. And also so far, there's been no spice which I am so happy about. Not saying I'm against spice in books or anything like that, but compared to Fourth Wing, where spice was like maybe 40% of the way through the book or 30%, I forget when. And then after that point, they just kept including all the spice every other chapter. And I just did not enjoy that. I mean, I'm exaggerating. So that's not actually the percentage that it was in Fourth Wing, but you get what I'm saying. With Powerless, it's like more will they, won't they? There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of like slow burn, I would say. And that's what I enjoy. I love, 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 love slow burn. Slow burn is my jam. Slow burn is great. That is why I love 
Kaz and Inej so much. Their slow burn was so good. I really appreciate that Lauren did that with, with Kai and Peyton. I mean, who knows? Maybe the last 40% of the book, she's gonna throw in spice left and right. I don't really know. I don't really think so. That's not really the vibe that I get. Also love how Kai is like super attentive. Like he is super attentive to Peyton and he is definitely like an acts of service type of guy, which is like, you know, <laughs> if you like acts of service types of people, you'll get what I'm saying. You get, you get it. You just get it. Yeah. Anyways, I'm waiting for my video to render and I thought I would be able to multitask and film some videos while I do that, but it's severely slowing down my computer. So I can't do that. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna read while I wait for this to render and I'm going to come back when I'm done this book because I'll probably finish by the time this is done rendering since it looks like it's gonna take another hour or so. So with that being said, I will see you guys then. <laughs> A lot happened in the last 20% of this book. Like a lot. <laughs> a lot happened and I should have seen it coming. Like the last plot twist, I really should have seen it coming. And I kind of am mad at myself that I didn't see it coming sooner than that. Like I thought the plot twist was going to be about infidelity. <laughs> with the king and Kai not being their real brother. Like I thought that was gonna be the plot twist. It was not, that was not the plot twist. It just got really violent towards the end. That's all I gotta say. It got really violent. A lot of things happened. And honestly, I thought the things that happened would impact me more. Like I thought I would be like, heartbroken but I'm not that heartbroken you know and I think that's why I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 just because it's not that it was a bad book but it just doesn't feel like like a four star read for me like I think I'll think about them from time to time and I'll think about this world from time to time but I don't think I'll be obsessed with this world at least not until the second book like I think the second book the second book is definitely gonna be enemies to lovers it's gonna be enemies slash boy that's obsessed with her slash lovers. And I can't wait for the second book. But as for the first book, I have to give it a 3.75 out of five. I mean, it's a setup book, you know, nothing wrong with it. I think there was a lot to establish and yeah. Uh, <laughs> also too, the trials, it kind of feels like the Hunger Games meets the Triwizard Tournament. And if you read the book, I, I feel like you know what I'm talking about, especially with the last trial. I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. But like I said, I'm super excited for the second book and the third book. I believe the second book is coming out next year in July, which is perfect because that is my birthday month. So thank you, Lauren Roberts, for thinking about me and my birthday and releasing it so close to my birthday. I'm just kidding. She literally has no idea I exist. <laughs> But that's gonna be super exciting. I hope it's not like a fourth wing situation where they're rushing her to finish writing this book series and it turns out not so great. At least that's what I heard from the grapevine about Iron Flame. So hopefully that is not the same situation. Otherwise I will be sad because there is a lot of potential in this book for sure. There is a lot of potential. It's like one of those books that it's like not the best writing, but the like we're not here for the best writing when you read these types of books. And I saw on Goodreads, someone explained it so well. It felt like a rom-com with very little fantasy elements. Like there were, like it's definitely a fantasy book. Don't go into this thinking it's not a fantasy book, guys. It's definitely a fantasy book, but it feels less fantasy and more rom-com, but like not so much on the com. It's not really a comedy. Like there's definitely funny moments, but especially in the last 20%, definitely like the calm is not in the room with us, you know? That is exactly the vibes. Rom-com with sprinkles of fantasy. That's exactly how it feels. So if you like that, like not a lot of fantasy, but some fantasy and you like a lot of tension and close proximity sort of vibes, I think you'll like this book a lot. It's not enemies to lovers. If anybody tells you that this is an enemies to lovers book, they are lying to you. They are lying to your face. This is not enemies to lovers at all. No, no. And I think if someone tells you that it's enemies to lovers, you have to reevaluate them as someone in your life because why would they lie to you like that? If they read this book and they, they can boldly tell you that this is enemies to lovers, they need to reevaluate what enemies to lovers is because it's not. It's truly not enemies to lovers at all. Like, yeah, they say that they hate each other, but we all know, including the characters, 
They know that they don't hate each other, actually, from the start. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to seem aggressive with that, but I just, one of my biggest pet peeves with books is that people label so many things enemies to lovers and it's not actually enemies to lovers. So many books out there, I was conned. I was duped into reading because it was enemies to lovers and it was not enemies to lovers. It was, if anything, it was like mildly inconvenienced into attracted into lovers like instant lovers most times that is literally what enemies to lovers is most times like when i'm talking about enemies to lovers i'm talking about like nina and matthias that is true enemies to lovers nina and matthias they should be a case study in enemies to lovers because that is how you do that is exactly how you do enemies to lovers i will stand on this hill because what are we doing labeling medium key insta love from two people that mildly are annoyed with each other as enemies to lovers what are we doing what are we doing with that? Like, we need to stop. We need, we need to leave that behind us, okay? All right? Anyways, before I go into a whole TED Talk about that, that is it, guys. Let me know if you guys have read this book. If you liked it, didn't like it, I would love to talk to you about this book in the comments. So feel free to leave your thoughts, your opinions, everything and more, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!